Hi, I'm Siddharth. I'm a functional medicine practitioner. In this video, we'll be talking about a very common problem, which a lot of people are struggling with and a very little known contributor to this problem. So the problem is obesity or too much of weight. And the contributor, the factor that we will be exploring today is stress. So over the last few decades, obesity has become so common that there are some experts, health experts, who are advocating that it be declared as a pandemic, as an epidemic, you know, as a national emergency in many countries. Even in a relatively poorer country like India, it is estimated that anywhere up to 30% of the adult population is overweight or obese. And an increasing proportion of children are also being found to be overweight. Excessive weight is almost always an indication that there are many other issues in the body, health issues. Also, obesity or excess weight contributes to creating many downstream problems, a perfect vicious cycle. So what are the true reasons behind this, you know, sudden explosion of the number of people who are overweight? And how does stress play a role in this? Let us try to understand this. Now let us understand one fundamental point. Over millions of years, the body has evolved to store energy primarily in the form of fat. In the form of carbohydrates or proteins, it can only store a very small amount of energy, maybe up to a day's worth of energy. Combined carbohydrates and proteins can go up to two days, maximum, that's all. Beyond that, it is only fat. From the body's perspective, Fat is fuel for the future when you may not get enough food to eat. As far as the body is concerned, it is preparing itself for a future time when you will not have access to food. So it is an essential survival mechanism for the body. So as far as the body is concerned, it is only preparing itself to stay alive in a future based on the kind of lifestyle we are asking it to live right now, the kind of environment that we are creating for the body right now. If we are living largely in the fight or flight mode or technically known as the sympathetic dominance mode, then the body will try to store more and more energy in the form of fat. So what are some examples of a lifestyle that makes the body activate the fight or flight mode? or move into the sympathetic dominance mode. Maybe your job is very stressful. You have a stressful, you know, relationships. Maybe there is a lot of friction at home with, you know, members in the family. Maybe you stay up late in the nights, binge drinking coffee, alcohol, a lot of crap food. We are not living a lifestyle that tells our bodies that we are safe and secure, that there are no dangers lurking just around the corner. We are actually living a lifestyle which tells the body that there is risk, that somebody is there to get you, either in the you know uh, friction, anger, tension, frustration, irritation, all of these things are signals to the body that it is in danger. That's the, that's the only language it understands. It doesn't understand all this sophisticated language that we are, you know, evolved and live today. Where all of these negative emotions can happen because of small trifling matters around us. As far as the body's survival mechanism is concerned, it only understands that if you are feeling anything negative in your mind, there is danger to your life. And it activates the necessary systems to prepare itself to survive that. So once again, we are not living a lifestyle that tells our bodies that we are safe and sound, that there are no dangers lurking around just around the corner, that we are safe and food is, ab is abundant. There is no need to go on storing food in the form of fat for the future. We are not giving those signals to the body. Generally, when you talk about uh, weight gain, obesity, the most common reasons that are given are genetics and a lack of physical activity. These are important contributor, contributing factors, no doubt about it. But they are no way 
by no way are they the most important. The, when you approach this from the functional medicine lens and you try to understand what's really happening in the body, you will realize that stress and an imbalanced diet are the two most important factors. Another important uh, factor that plays a role might be hypothyroidism. So once again, it is, it is estimated that almost 20% of uh, adult people population, especially women, have certain degree of hypothyroidism. It may be clinical or subclinical, but the thyroid gland is not working at its optimal level. We already know this very well, that whenever there is any kind of stress in the mind, the body increases the secretion of the stress hormones like cortisol, adrenaline, etc. When these hormones go up, they also increase the secretion of insulin. Both sugar and insulin in the body go up. When this happens, the cells start becoming more and more resistant to insulin. So insulin resistance is a process where the insulin is not able to do its fundamental job of moving the glucose into the blood cells, from the bloodstream into the blood cell, into the cells of the body. As a result, the sugar and levels stay higher or longer in the bloodstream. When this starts happening, there is another function of insulin that happens more, which is storing uh, food in the form of energy. So higher levels of insulin also instruct the body to convert more and more of this blood glucose into fat and store it away for the future. This is a mechanism that is happening. So as a result of stress, the body converts more and more of the food that we eat, which is actually carbohydrates largely, into fat and stores it away in the body. So here uh, there is another myth that is very prevalent that it is eating fat that makes me fat. No, it is actually eating the wrong kind of carbohydrates, the refined carbohydrates in a large quantity that makes you fat because it is the carbohydrates which get digested into glucose and then the body converts that glucose into fat. Similarly, we know that when we are stressed out, the body reduces the secretion of the hormone known as TSH. When TSH secretion goes down, the thyroid gland starts reducing the production of T4 hormone. When the hormone production, thyroid hormone production goes down, naturally, the body's ability to use up the fuel, the glucose in the body goes down. And it starts putting on more weight. We know this very well, right? That the most common symptom, one of the most common symptoms of hypothyroidism is weight gain and a very distinct inability to lose this weight easily. You make a lot of effort, you do a lot of exercise, you lose a little bit. The moment your exercise levels go down, immediately you gain it back and maybe even more than earlier. So these are some very simple connections between stress and obesity. So if you want to start working towards a leaner version of yourself, one of the first things you need to do is to start working on your stress levels. Because only when the body feels that it is in a safe, protected environment will it stop storing more and more of the food that you eat in the form of fat. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful. I'll see you again soon with some more interesting videos. Bye-bye. Take care.